Hey there, hi, Anirudh here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Roadmap to User Experience Design, episode number four. And today, in this episode, I'm going to share the complete roadmap and list of all the techniques and methods that a UX designer across the globe uses to solve a specific problem within all the product stages. So the main reason to share this is that as a UX designer, you can understand that there are so many methods and techniques to learn to improve your product and scale it to next level. So without any further ado, let's Let's get started. So let's get started with the complete roadmap all the design skills that you should eventually learn not on the very first day but eventually get to learn as you grow in your career. So I have bifurcated the complete roadmap into multiple sections be it a UI section, UI, UX deliverables, law of UX, design processes, all the design tools and user validation processes. So let's get into it and discuss one at a time. So first let me talk about the non-design skills. So for a master designer, it's design skills and non-design skills. In non-design skill, we have soft skills, communication, presentation, collaboration, UX copywriting. Well, this is non-design skills, but eventually it will help you shape up your design career going forward. Second thing is marketing skills. Well, it's very important to market yourself in today's world because people can't see you online, they can't see your work. If you don't market yourself properly, there would be very low visibility on your profiles on social media. So maybe social media marketing is something that you need to take up as a non-design skill. LinkedIn, Instagram or Twitter. These are the three platforms that you can target yourself, post your content and all the UX that you do over here and just present it out here. Moment marketing. So moment marketing is basically designing something around uh, the elements that are trending right now. For example, there's something that is totally trending on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. Maybe you can create some artifacts or visuals around it and put it on Instagram, your LinkedIn profile and Twitter. So that is all about uh, moment marketing. So let's just move into the design skill. Design skill is going to be one of the most crucial part of your career. And let's just try to understand from the very basics. So if you go ahead and talk about design skills, I have bifurcated into a very smaller section. For example, you have to or you can get started with actual building blocks of a design, which is the design or the visual principles. For example, emphasis, balance, alignment, contrast, movements, negative space in proportion, repetition. These are the some basic design visual principles that you can Google yourself and just try to find the answer for it. So do study this thing. Going forward, the second thing is user interface. Talking about UI, that's a different section. But before actually getting started with UI, you need to understand the user interface elements. For example, the complete UI elements are bifurcated into four buckets. The input controlled, navigational component, informational component, and the containers. For example, input containers may have something like checkbox, radio button, drop down, or anything that can be used to take some sort of data or input from the users. Similarly, navigation components might have search, bread, compagination, which will help user from moving from one part of the page to another part. Similarly, you can go ahead and read about all the four user interface elements. Let's just talk about the digital ecosystem, which is one of the most important thing that you need to kickstart your design career. So I have bifurcated the complete section into apps, websites and wearable and home devices. So let's just talk about apps. So we have further bifurcations in app, which is native apps. So native apps are basically those applications which you have in your device right now. You might be using an Android app, you might be using an Apple or you might be using a Windows phone. So basically native apps are the application that can be installed in your app. Going forward, there's something called cross platform apps, which is you can develop for one single single platform that can be used across all the other app. Unlike native app, for native app, you'll have to develop different coding for Android app, differently coded for iOS and differently coded for Windows. But cross platform apps are basically you can code once and use it on multiple platforms. So there are some of the uh, UI frameworks, for example, React Native, which is by Facebook and Flutter, which is by Google. There's a lot of it, but these are the two most common and famous things into it then maybe you can try to understand something about the app languages also and its uses you don't have to actually do it or understand the language how does it function function but you can definitely have an understanding of the names so like java and Kotlin is something that is used for android development swift and c sharp is something that is used for ios development next let's going forward to the website part of it 
So once to understand the digital ecosystem for website, you need to understand the web sizes and its breakdown. For example, anything that you do or design for a web application, you'll have to make sure that you go ahead and do the mobile first approach and draw the mobile screen of it. Then also think about how does the design will look on tablets and iPad and how does the design will look on an HD devices. There's something called cross browser compatibility issue while you're designing for a web app, you need to understand that whether your design and component will be having a same behavior on uh, say Safari browser, Chrome browser or Firefox browser or not. So you'll have to make, make sure that the complete cross browser compatibility issues is also taken care and in consideration than web languages and users. So basically anything that you see on website is either developed by HTML, CSS or JavaScript or combination of each. Let's just talk about the UI skills. I have bifurcated the complete UI skills into three important buckets, the foundation skills, the website design skills and the guidelines. So let's go and talk about something like typography, color, alignment, shadow, space, layout and composition, which would be your building blocks for your UI design. Now that you already know the visual principle and UI elements, you need to design something, right? So to get started with that, you need to understand the complete building blocks of typography, colors, primary, secondary color, how to select a theme for your brand or your app, alignment, spacing issue. So about layout and composition, you need to understand how can you make the most of your complete space on your mobile device or in literally very HD web devices. Grid system basically in order to make sure that your complete design is very consistent throughout your life cycle you'll have to know what is grid system is all about four column grid system for your android or any application maybe 12 grid system for your website you need to understand the grid system also then going forward the more mature you become with your design skills and all you can definitely go ahead and study about design system and component library so design system and component library is more like a way to reduce the complete redundancy in your app if your app has say for example more than 70 80 or like thousand screens you don't have to actually do it from scratch you can make a component library and reuse the same component by just dragging drop throughout the uh, app life cycle let's just talk about website design well, yes, while you're designing on a website, you need to understand the responsive web design guidelines. For example, you should have an understanding of how would my design that looks something like this on a website would look something different on my mobile device. So responsive web design is something you need to look into it. Responsive assets. Well, yes, if your design has something like, for example, 40 by 40 pixels on uh, say mobile, how would it translate into a website? or a larger HD devices, you need to make that also in consideration. Responsive screens breakdown, like I just saw the multiple breakdowns on the top of it, like mobile, tablets and HD device, you need to have an understanding how will this size will transit it into this or how will this size will be translated into an HD size. So that is something that you need to keep in mind while you're doing it for website. Then there come some guidelines. Well, definitely, you now you know all the basic principles, UI elements, you can now know, you can do actual UI by understanding the foundation. So before getting started with that also now, to design the actual UI in some tool, you need to understand some guidelines. For example, accessibility issues that are already available on internet, maybe a cross-browser cross, cross browser compatibility issue or maybe a contrast issue, you need to go ahead and see that also. Material design, if you're designing for an Android app, you have to go and just study what are the guidelines laid off by the Google itself. Then human interface guidelines for iOS, if you're doing any iOS app for Apples, you'll have to study this and just follow the guidelines. There's no mental maths or scientific thing to follow, you just need to study it. Responsive web design guidelines, there are multiple guidelines laid off by the internet itself you can go ahead and try to read that and implement into it the most important and most huge bucket which is ux skills so if i give a larger bucket overview you would see that it is very huge very huge it has a lot of techniques a lot of methods a lot of other ux delivers that you need to do as a ux designer but irrespective of that let's just dig into it and explore each and every section one at a time so when you talk about UX skills, you need to first get started as a understanding of user experience field. So maybe you start with understanding what is customer experience. So customer experience itself is a very larger bucket that talks about all the touch points where user can get in touch or communicate with your brand. So customer experience says that you need to make sure that you have the same consistent experience throughout all the other platform wherever a user can get in touch with your brand. 
Then there is something called user experience. Yes, it's this is also a very broad bucket. User experience to define it, I would say that you know you need to make sure to define a solution that would be so simple to use that user don't have to use any extra mental math or cognitive load to understand your solution. So that is all about user experience design. Going forward, uh, there's some common roles in UX design field that you need to be aware of. You can go to LinkedIn and search for everything and try to understand and analyze all the expectations that the people have from this role. For example, UX designer, UX UI designer, UX researcher, product researcher, and there are a couple of very more, but these are the most common one. So the way I like to study these roles is go back to LinkedIn or some job profile or portfolio and try to search for opening jobs and go back to the requirement section and try to analyze what is the actual requirement for UX designer, what is the actual requirement of a UX researcher and then you, we can do the reverse engineering and then try to learn all the skills that is mentioned on the job portal. Going forward, there are some generic UX deliverables that you need to understand. For example, research, wireframes, user journey, user flow, information architectural persona. Your user research can be about anything, product research or your market research or your user research. Wireframing is basically just about, you know, sketching your early stage idea. User journey and user flow is basically about mapping all the all the touch points and the flow that a user would go through while he or she is using the product or before using the product. Information architecture is all about all the data that the application would have at different different level. Maybe if you talk about information architecture of a profile, so my profile would have my basic detail, contact details, address detail, or my portfolio or my profile page. So that would define the complete data about a specific section. Persona. So personas are basically a group of people that represent same set of problems and issue. So if I have 10,000 users and maybe 2,000 users are facing same issues among them. So I would just group these persons into one single name called Anirudh. So I would say persona number one Anirudh are facing same sort of issues. Let's just solve for them because I'm not going to design 10,000 solution for 10,000 other users. So I would try to find out the main common patterns into it and maybe translate into three or four persona at max. Going forward, you definitely need to learn something called Law of UX. There's a beautiful website called lawofux.com. You need to go there and study all the laws from there. Because say, for example, you understand how to do UI, you understand how to do wireframes. But basically, while you're solutioning, you need to keep in consideration with some of the important laws that are basically there on Internet or people that they are following or across the globe. So uh, there's a beautiful website called Law of UX. You can definitely go and visit that website to study all this law. Uh, let me explain you one or two and how will that impact your design thing. So say for example, aesthetic usability effect. So for example, there's a product A which is aesthetically appealing but less functional. There's a product B which is not aesthetically appealing but more functional. So over here what happens is even though the product B is very functional but not looks not good in terms of aesthetics or looks people will definitely go and opt for product one which is more aesthetically appealing it's more like you know uh, impression on your very first sight so that's what that is what the law talks about where a user at any given point would choose something that is very good looking or aesthetically appealing over something that is more functional second say for example jacobs law so jacobs law talks about uh, that the users are spending more time on the other products than your own products so if you want to design something that caters their need you need to make sure that they design the solution in such a way that is more similar or in line to the existing products so that's why you would see that a lot of ott platforms or any dating platform or any uh, cab booking platform they go in the same direction we have a, a for ott platform we have an heading all the content we have another heading all the content same will go with netflix prime and all the other product if you talk about any other car booking applications they would have a map to and from so we follow the same thing so that once a user comes from some other product to your own product they have a very small learning curve or maybe negligible you don't have to put a good amount of learning curve on your products because if user want to spend user has to spend a lot of time understanding your product they would definitely switch to something else Similarly, let's talk about some other principles, Gasol's law and then cognitive bias. You can go ahead and try to understand each and every one in details. Uh, the website has explained everything in very detailed format. So you can go ahead and help yourself. 
let's just talk about the design process so design process is a place where you know once you follow your design process you will understand that there are thousands of other deliverables that you need to do in each and every stage of any design process that you choose one design process where you have a lot of experience and you can choose your own design process to follow there is udc which is human centered design approach there's design thinking there's a double diamond i would definitely make another video about you know talking on the design processes and how to follow a design process for your own problem statement but going forward you need to understand that two important point over here is for a design system or a design uh, design process that uh, design process depends on what stage of your product you are working on right now if it's you know from starting or it's just in an ideation state the design process would differ and if there's a product which is already launched or you know you need to do some sort of refine the design process would definitely eventually differ so i would recommend that never stick on to a design process like blindfoldedly but understand the requirement and then decide which stage or which part i can get started with my design process going forward there's something called documentation well yes it's a pretty common thing you don't have to memorize or remember anything documentation is all about making sure that you document everything that you write the documentation can be your project brief your problem solving approach i personally write down everything like step number 1 i would do something like that step number 2 i would talk to my stakeholders step number 3 i would do some initial research step number 4 something like that you can actually document your complete ux solution which you, which further can be used for your ux case study you can note down all the user persona user experience map sketches usability report stakeholders questionnaires so anything and everything that you think should be documented can be done as a ux documentation process let's talk about the design research part of it so design research itself is a very broader umbrella just like your ux or a customer experience but mainly bifurcated into two important parts the ux research which is the user research uxr or the product and the market research basically when we talk about user research we just try to identify two important main factors which is more like the attitude of the users and the behavior in attitude would want to understand what is that the user has to say versus what is user actually doing in your app so these are the two main bifurcation about the user research and some methods to do this user research are three important research i would say there is quantitative research there is qualitative research and there is ethnographic research now qualitative research has to do something with a good amount of in person research where you would want to understand a lot of details from a specific user so you would have say for example one on one interviews or a focus groups interview quantitative research is more about you know trying to understand a uh, data from huge amount of users maybe from city tier 1 or tier 2 so you would try to send some online surveys to a lot of people and they would come back to you with a online results there's something called ethnographic research well ethnographic research can be a part of quantitative qualitative bucket as well but ethnographic research means you need to actually go to a place to research about some specific person maybe if you're trying to make an application around farmers you need to go ahead and live their life for a day or a week so that's all ethnographic research is all about in qualitative research we have some important buckets over here like user interviews where you would have an one on one interview with your users card sorting there is something called open card sorting close card sorting which is uh, most widely used for you know deciding an information architecture with the users empathy map mapping user diary mood boards focus group you can definitely go out to google and just try to search for an individual buckets and get some understanding of it uh, you don't need to actually study everything in details because eventually once you start to perform any of this method you would learn about it so going forward we just understood that there's a user research bucket which talks about the attitude and behavior of your users it can be qualitative quantitative or ethnographic and each of this bucket would have a lot of other methods it's not just restricted to this but some other methods are also there but this is to give a fair understanding of or all things that you can do to do a successful user research once you talk about the product research and the market research there's more important parts like uh, understanding the actual benchmarking of the product or the market so benchmarking can be a solo benchmarking where you just compare your product with the actual competitor or benchmarking can be a general product or a marketing benchmarking where you would try to do a competitive analysis and try to match all the features and benefits with all the other competitors that are in the market right now 
then we talk about uh, gap analysis so gap analysis is basically uh, there's something that you need to achieve but you're not able to achieve right now with your existing product so why are you not able to achieve that then we try to go ahead and do some sort of gap analysis there is tech feasibility check also because say for example uh, there's a hypothetical solution where i want to travel from point a to point b and then you would say that let's just go by jet or let's just go by private plane well if it's possible you can go by walking or just using a public transport also you need to understand the feasibility of finance over there so similarly when you propose a solution you need to understand the tech feasibility also once you're done with your ux research and design bucket let's just talk about the ux validation and the audit so basically in order to do some sort of solutioning you would go ahead and do all the ux research as we discussed can be user based can be product based but when you started designing your solution there are two important factors over here first if your solution is already designed and developed you will have to do some sort of ux audit onto it and uh, some example of it would be say a b testing or heuristic evaluation where you would go ahead and try to understand the actual issues that are there in our product or maybe you can go ahead and try to understand the data analysis by analytics also and validation is all about you know before your product is actually going live into the market you will have to make sure that to validate the idea or the solution with actual target audience so that would be usability test testing or eye tracking or maybe some sort of a b testing can be a part of usability testing also where you compare two solution and try to understand which one is doing best for the users so that is something we need to understand in terms of ux audit and validation uh, each of the study is definitely very huge in itself for example usability study personally takes it more than 3 to 4 weeks at any given organization it's a very huge process but the outcome and the actual results of a ux study or say for example the benefits are very huge so definitely you need to perform that going forward to the wireframing things so uh, there is nothing more to learn about wireframing but just the concept so there are multiple ways you can you know transit translate your ideas into some solution which can be more like some random sketches rough sketches low fidelity wireframe high fidelity wireframe or medium fidelity wireframe in wireframing the only level of uh, fidelity increases with the amount of specific details that you add to a wireframe so maybe somewhere you are just drawing random boxes and maybe in middle middle fidelity you would just put some random images into high fidelity you would just want to pick up all the right set of data over here maybe proceed to payment or cancel your order so the amount of fidelity would go on increasing from sketch till high fidelity wireframes then we have something called prototyping again there's you in prototyping you have to make sure to design a complete solution which is interactive enough where we can you know explain the stakeholders or developer what is the complete product is all about i have made another video on this you can go and check out in the other episodes also but uh, prototypes are basically of two two different variants the static and the interactive so static variants would be just more like to understand the flow from point a to point b or point c to point d but interactive elements consider all the animations and uh, micro interaction that can be easily done in protopy or figma as such so that is all about prototyping let's just talk about the final part of your ux bucket which is ux measurement so basically let's just say you did all sort of wireframing prototyping ux validation all sort of research and you came up with a product which is live into the market right now so right now you also need to understand that what are the actual return on investment on that product what are the behaviors of users that are using the product what are the attitude of users towards that product what are they saying what are they using or in what direction the product is going so measure that return of investment of a product we have something called kpis and framework so kpis are basically key performing indicators so this would tell you that your product is doing good or bad in terms of say attitude of our users like whatever they are saying and maybe in terms of behavior of the users like how are they actually using the product so when you talk about the behavior kpi there is something called task success rate task on time search versus navigation user error rates so basically this methods will determine a specific result or insights that will talk about how successfully user can perform their task what is the actual time that they are taking to complete a specific task how efficiently they are moving from search to some other pages or directly from navigation to navigation from one page to another 
similarly you also want to understand the attitude of the users towards your product so maybe if i'm using a product you would see it very often that people ask for review so asking for review is importantly known as attitudinal behavior towards your kpis so you can go ahead and talk about usability score of your product you can talk about net promotion score so nps is very standard where you would go ahead and send a form to users and ask them to fill which would have a rating of 1 to 10 so users will go ahead and place a rating of 5 10 or maybe 7 or 8 depends on the attitude of the user whatever they feel about it so that is one of the method similarly there's another framework which is given by google itself which is the heart framework and now heart framework talk about five important factors the happiness engagement adoption retention and task successful so happiness is all about how comfortable or desirable the app is for the users it may talk about how comfortably he or she is using your product how often are they coming what is the reordering rate going forward talking about engagement what are the time that the users are spending on my application adoption how easily can we acquire users into our app retention what is the actual time that users are spending and coming back onto the app and it's not just installing within one or five days or say one month but they're staying it for a very long time task success rate similar to what we have discussed over here in the behavior so the heart framework is a combination of the attitude and behavior that we have just studied right now and you can go ahead and google search it it's something given by the google directly so that was all about the ux framework and more or like that was all about the ux skills i know it was pretty large amount of ux skills but we still have some more skills to learn about and let's just go to the final countdown which is nothing but the design tools i have already made a video on design tools in one of the episode you can go back and try to understand that but giving a quick glance of the design tool there's something called figma which is used for you know ux ui design interactive prototyping there's something like sketch as a tool Uh, we can design and do static prototyping in sketch also there's adobe xd you can do designing wireframing sketching here also there's something called zeppelin so zeppelin is basically used for you know handing over all the assets to the developer you can use any of the software figma sketch or adobe xd to design something but there's something called zeppelin in order to provide the design and the access to the complete develop team you'll have to give it into something called zeppelin So a lot of companies I have worked with uses Figma directly because the inspect element that the developer wants to understand the height, width, or padding can be done by Sketch or Figma directly. Then going forward, there is a documentation tool talking about Notion and Google Docs. It's pretty simple tool. We talked about a UX documentation process over here. So all the documentation process that you see over here can be done directly by Notion or Google Docs. Similarly there is Miro and Figjam in order to do any kind of ideation iteration collaboration in order to draw some user flow product mind map or user journeys information architecture you can use the complete tool known as Miro or Figjam so this mind map i have completely made into the tool called Miro This was the complete mind map for UX methods and techniques that product designer uses across the globe to solve their given problem. Now, I understand seeing so many methods and resources, it might be very intimidating for many of you. But you don't have to worry at all because you don't have to learn and understand everything on your very first day. When I actually started my first UX job, I hardly knew 10% of this. So that's perfectly fine. That's all I have for you today in this roadmap to user experience design episode number 4. If you have any questions, please put them into the comments and I will revert back to you as soon as possible. This is me Anil Prasthar signing it off. See you in next episode where I'm going to talk about the complete UX portfolio from scratch. Till then, bye-bye.